Good morning, Kimiko <laughs> Elizabeth Glenn. Welcome on VH <laughs> Berries. Thanks for having me. I am extremely grateful. How are you mm -hmm. doing today? Well, today I'm all right. I'm great. <laughs> I'm doing great. I had a great night last night, and here I am this morning. <laughs> How about you? I am very uh, excited because today is Sunday and spring <laughs> is not awakening because spring <laughs> is fully awake in the mm. northern hemisphere of the planet mm. Earth and new <laughs> projects and flowers of yours are now blooming. I love that. <laughs> That was so wonderful. <laughs> But before we jump into uh, those fantastic projects, Kimiko Elizabeth Glenn, I would love to discuss about the painting behind you. Because oh, we yes. can see a young boy <laughs> taking out his t-shirt uh, at the border of a rectangular swimming pool. Or maybe, <sighs> is it... Uh, or is he between the lakes? So the story behind this actually is it's a female. And my um, <laughs> this artist, Jenna Milanese, who's incredible. I'm a big fan of her work. Um, and I have several of her paintings. But this one, um, she was doing a series on um, female inventors. And this was <laughs> her take on... Um, the woman who invented the bra. So that's the story behind this painting. And I don't know, she actually like, she went through a big blue phase where like that was the predominant color. And um, so I don't think this is by a lake. <laughs> I don't know where this is set. I imagine maybe a bedroom, but I think it's up for interpretation really. And I kind of like your interpretation. It is up for interpretation, Kimiko Elizabeth Glenn. And I mentioned <laughs> those uh, three words between the lakes because that person is maybe choosing to swim whether in the Green Lake or in the Duck Lake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> It's a definite possibility. Listen. This is a direct reference to the location in which you studied that is called the Enterlochen Center for the Arts. Can you tell us a little <laughs> bit more about it? Yeah, it's so funny. Every time you reference these things, I'm like, okay, what is this leading to? <laughs> um, yeah, Interlochen, I mean... Wow, you've really done your research. Interlochen was um, a place I went to for my senior year of high school. It's an arts uh, boarding school, essentially. And um, they're super famous for their arts um, summer program. And I think it started out as a music thing. So that's like their predominant division. And um, yeah, I went there for senior year of high school and made a lot of friends. And... Yeah, it was a, it was a very interesting pre-college experience. <laughs> But it was it was very much for the arts. It wasn't like a board like a mean scary boarding school. <laughs> it was like um we were performing all day and it was fun. You were performing all day and the yeah. word interlochen literally mm -hmm. means uh, between the lakes because uh, this is a small part of land located around uh, those two uh, source of water and personally uh, Kimiko Elizabeth Glenn what lakes <laughs> would you choose because on one side we have the duck lake who <laughs> looks like uh, me when I'm trying to bake a bagel with its peninsula <laughs> and on the other side the <laughs> green lake who has the shape of Keith Chatterley orange squirrel <laughs> tails. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> oh my gosh, is this a make your own adventure situation? I love it. Um, <laughs> well, I, I love the idea of like a green lake. I don't know if that's where we're leading, but yeah, that sounds very peaceful to me. <laughs> Absolutely. I also prefer uh, the green lake with uh, the shape <laughs> similar to the tail of a uh, Keith Chatterley. And I would love <laughs> to discuss about this character because yeah. uh, that's Queerwell is at the heart <laughs> of a new television series in which you are playing <laughs> Uh, the main part. Can you tell us a little bit more about that television series? Yeah, of course. Oh my gosh, I've been working on it for years. Um, and such is the case when it comes to animation. It's a animated show on Disney+. Plus. Actually, it's on the Disney channel. You can watch it on Disney. Um, but Or Disney+, Plus, either, um, which is great. We love variety. But um, it's based off this character named Kif, I play Kith and she's a squirrel. She's very like has a zest for life, always like needs to like she has an ad idea and then she like needs to follow it. And she has her best friend Barry by her side, who's kind of like, you know, a little squishy bunny friend who is played by H. Michael Croner. And he is hilarious. Um, he just has this. Uh, you just watch the trailer. Um, <laughs> but um, they go on adventures and there's a lot of musical elements involved um, when it feel when they feel called to have a musical element. And it's so fun. It's um, written, it's um, created by Nick Small and Lucy Heavens, um, Ken Osborne. It's, you know, they're incredible um, creators and writers and illustrators and <laughs> musicians and like they're this is their brainchild and you know these are people who have won Emmys and have like an impeccable sense of humor so it's amazing to see that like they're able to create a show for children essentially that I can enjoy that I think is hilarious um, because that's often it's a hard balance you know a lot of times to create something that's like essentially g-rated like good clean fun but still absolutely hilarious like the situations are ridiculous <laughs> The situations are sometimes mm. ridiculous. Uh, Kimiko Elizabeth Glenn. And <laughs> when I am watching, for example, from the very first seconds of every single of the uh, 10 episode, with, for example, the mm -hmm. intro, I feel that the two creators, uh, Lucy Heavens and Nick Small, are really trying mm -hmm. to conquer the world with that show. For example, with the name Keith repeated <laughs> 22 yeah. times, or may oh, maybe... Did you count? 23 <laughs> times if we wow. uh, count the last one as twice because the last one is longer. Mm, ah, I see. <laughs> wow, did you count that? That's impressive. <laughs> I actually did count it that. It oh was gosh. extremely difficult to do. Uh, <laughs> I know, it goes by quick. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us, um, Kimiko Glenn, about the mm -hmm. stories uh, of your uh, character? Uh, because this is a comedy show, but always mm -hmm. with different adventure in every episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So, for instance, in the first episode or two, um, I think the first episode is basically about Kif seeing that there's a new um, drinking fountain in town <laughs> and he wants to be the very first person or she, I'm so sorry, she wants to be the very first person to take a sip from the drinking fountain and, and thinks it's like, you know, the be all end all. Um, but, uh, and she sings a whole several songs about it. <laughs> you know, she is very enthusiastic about the whole situation. Um, but... One of my favorites, um, at least in the beginning section of all these episodes, is um, this episode called the 
the fourth or fifth bath. I can't remember if it's the fourth or the fifth bath. But essentially, and I guess this is a thing for big families that like I've never experienced because I had just a sister. But um, <laughs> apparently they draw the bath at the beginning of the night and whoever gets the last bath gets all the recycled water from every other sibling. <laughs> and it's disgusting. Like the idea of it's disgusting. But apparently this was a thing. This is a thing for people who have like a big family because they don't want to waste water. They don't want to like, you know, drop the water bill. And um, yeah, it's disgusting. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's like the dynamic of um, Kif and like Barry's family, who's, you know, the bunny that I was said bunny. Um, that is Kif's best, best friend and um, Barry's big family. And um, it's just so silly and ridiculous and so fun um but yeah there are a lot of great episodes i mean there's like one called i think the the pigeons of of the acapella apocalypse or something <laughs> um you know like you can take that how, how you want and um i think what was just recently released was um a musical episode um where they so basically um the episodes are like i think um two 11 minute episodes or something put into one and in this case it was two 11 minute episodes that were like to be continued so like it was one big episode and it was like the school musical and um of course I loved it because I love musicals so <laughs> yeah it's a good time it is a good time, Kimiko Elizabeth Glenn. And in definitive, <laughs> whether it's the water fountain in the first episode <laughs> or uh, the bathroom, it is better to always be the first one. Always. Yeah. Nobody talks about the second, you know? <laughs> is, is the point Kif makes. <laughs> It is the point that kids are making, but this is also the subject of one of the songs of every episode because you are singing one original uh, song in every episode using yeah. your talent as a song, uh, a singer. <laughs> yeah, well, I hope. <laughs> To come back to the meaning of the name Keith, I saw that it also means the word cool in South yeah. Africa. Yeah. The creators are South African. And um, yeah, I guess it's like a, a highly common phrase or, or word that's used in South Africa. I think to be like, that's Kif. <laughs> like, that's cool or something. I might be misusing it. Don't take me on. Don't take my word on that. Um, <laughs> but this is what I'm told. And I might have misinterpreted. But that's my interpretation of it. <laughs> you can look it up on Google. <laughs> this is your interpretation of uh, that specific uh, meaning, Kimiko Elizabeth Glenn. And another <laughs> interpretation that I truly and a hundred percent trust uh, is yeah. about the Mongolian Empire because yeah. now I know the truth about this chapter of history. <laughs> the truth, the hard <laughs> truth. <laughs> and of course, you're referring to. I am referring to one of your recent project called a uh, history of the world part two and i would love you to tell me more mm. about it uh, because this is modern comedy mm -hmm. yeah well i mean it's based off of the original mel brooks uh movie uh, history of the world part one which i was a big fan of as a kid i was a huge fan of mel brooks actually like i was obsessed with young frankenstein i think i've watched that movie like more than 10 times um and you know all all the people that he would work with in those movies i just loved and so um yeah it was kind of the thrill of my life to get that offer in my inbox because um 
<laughs> they, I think they, I, I don't think they like auditioned people. They just like selected people. And I was like, oh my gosh, they, they picked me. How, like I felt so special. And then by Mel Brooks, nonetheless, I mean, he didn't pick me, you know, individually. But like, you know, I'd like to think that, you know, uh, the Mel Brooks of it all selected me from above. Um, but yeah, it, it's really cool. It's basically like a series of sketches about like historical events and um the one i'm involved in is about um kubla khan and his concubines and i'm in a segment called um the real concubines of kubla khan and uh yeah it's uh it's essentially um laid out like a reunion andy cohen is in it andy khan <laughs> LOL. Um, ha ha ha. But it's super cool. Um, and also, uh, Crystal Kung Minkoff, who is an actual real housewife, um, is in it as well, which is, I think, brilliant. And Atsuko um, and uh, uh, a Poppy Lou and um, Scott, uh, um, Scout is in it um, with her sister, who I like. It's so interesting. Scout um, is a twin and. Um, she plays a twin in, in the show with her sister. And I had actually worked with her on a different show years ago. And I had never met her sister. Um, and it was so wild to see two scouts and to also see her, like, you know, do her thing, like, shine. She was so wonderful. Um, yeah, that day was so fun. Especially with the the sheep, the goat. <laughs> I can't remember what animal it was, but it was very cute. And he kept... Um, peeing and, and pooping everywhere. <laughs> Absolutely. Kimiko, Absolutely. Elizabeth, <laughs> uh, Glenn. And what I am going to say is going to make Shabby very sad, but my mm. favorite character is definitely <gasps> Flopsy. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, you can't beat Flopsy. Flopsy is a hit. <laughs> <laughs> I think that from... Uh, now, um, the favorite uh, partner of uh, Kublai Khan should now be uh, Flopsy, who is actually <laughs> who is actually a, a goat, if I understood correctly. Yeah, <laughs> real life goat. She was there. He was there. I can't remember. Uh, they were there. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have some very um, special memories during the set because um, Flopsy had to be on the same stage to deliver an extraordinary <laughs> performance. <laughs> I mean, the whole thing was super fun. I mean, Flopsy aside, um, it was just, you know, a great time to play around with comedy greats. I mean, greats of our time, like... Um, Ike Barinholtz and um, Nick Kroll, obviously, they were directing us and like, you know, asking us to try out all these different things and and things that I think like even sort of got chopped up in the edit. I mean, that ended like it all came together so hilariously. But like we had a whole like dance sort of situation, like back and forth dance. And um, yeah, it was so fun to play that day. <laughs> and um and yeah, I mean, like, I'm an animal lover. So anytime there's an animal on set, it's a good day for me. It, it doesn't matter if they're pissing and shitting everywhere. I'm in love. You know, I took a lot of goat content that day. <laughs> Absolutely. Just for myself. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, Kimiko, Elizabeth, Glenn. Every time that <laughs> there is an animal, you are uh, having your uh, best life. And I assume that yeah. on the set, Flopsy doesn't need to talk to the manager because <laughs> Flopsy is the manager. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> This is a very funny project and Kimiko Glenn, I would love to retrace your journey that started uh, way before encountering the duck and green lake. Um, it all started in Phoenix, Arizona mm -hmm. and um, more specifically <laughs> with Mark's camcorder. 
Yeah, yeah, Mark, yeah, my dad. Um, totally. Um, I think that's how uh, how it all, I mean, I know that's how it all began. Um, this is something that just sort of came naturally to me as a kid. Um, I just had like so much energy and, and just like I was excitable and just like I wanted to express myself um, and I didn't know how. Um, and so I would just like, do impressions of singers because I like love to sing and I loved music and my parents recognized that at a young age so I got into like you know little groups like choir and you know voice lessons and like little performance groups that were just you know like throw the kid on stage have him sing a song you know that sort of thing where you just sort of like it's fun um but then I started I auditioned for a play, I think, in fifth grade um, for Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And um, it was like a real production. And that's kind of when I started taking it more seriously. Um, And I guess, I mean, at the time, as a kid, I didn't think, like, I'm taking this seriously. But I just, like, I never stopped. You know what I mean? Like, I just didn't, I just didn't think about it. It was just, like, what was my life it like it was what I wanted to do it was a natural fit and it just like led me in the direction I am today (laughs) it led uh, to the direction uh, in which uh, you are today and I also (laughs) learned that um, this place called Phoenix in Arizona was actually a very big theater scene at that time, mm-hmm. which gave you a lot of opportunities. Yeah, I mean, it was oddly like popping. Um, my, um, I was lucky enough to grow up in like a generation of kids that were really dedicated to like to doing it and to like being the best and, you know, with a great work ethic. Um, Because, you know, you don't always see that. I I even see, like, in the new generations coming up, um, you know, a certain sort of, like, it's the the intention is more for the fame versus, like, back in the day, there wasn't, like, social media or anything. It was all for the love and all because we were just, like, so passionate about (laughs) theater, about singing, about performing. And we just, like wanted to have the best time on stage together and it was like communal etc um but I also like was lucky enough to grow up around you know people who are legit working like most of the people that I I like performed with as a kid are like professionally doing it which is really cool like on all different levels like um like one of the I think within one of the first years I think I did like um what is it Winnie the Pooh (laughs) with um Emma Stone but like we were obviously like young and um you know Jordan Sparks and Chelsea Staub and you know uh Max Crum and all these people who are like legit working and like I could go on and on and on with that list like there are just so many people that and that was such a great example is what I'm getting at. Like to be able to watch people who are actually legit good and very passionate and learn from them. That's like the way I I do it best. I was actually thinking about this the other day, how I've never quite like loved acting class. Um, but when it comes to like acting, I love just like learning in the moment because you're just like forced to deliver and everyone's just like, wanting you to be great and you're with someone who's like hopefully like in the same sort of like wavelength as you and I don't know it's just yeah I think that a lot of magic happened back in the day which was part of why so many of us are still working and still doing it a lot of magic was in the air uh, Kimiko Elizabeth <laughs> Glenn and talking about Uh, love and family by expressing your full potential you probably and maybe stepped into uh, (laughs) into Mark singing career by using Mm -hmm. all of the 16 millimeter film pellicule 
What? <laughs> Wait, what? Wait, what are you talking about? <laughs> I was just joking about the fact that you used all the storage on the camcorder of Mark uh, by using yeah. all the film available in the house. Yeah. I mean, I think at the end of the day, I did him a favor. <laughs> I think that there's a lot of fun stuff now to watch back and... I have to say, I was a pretty hilarious kid. <laughs> In definitive, Kimiko Glenn, you were saved by the stage and uh, that particular uh, 19th century German fairy tale mm. called uh, Snow White, developed by the Brothers <laughs> Grimm a few centuries ago. Wow, I thought you were going to say Spring Awakening, but <laughs> just because I heard Germany. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. There is uh, Snow White, but also, mm. as you just mentioned, Spring Awakening. That was actually how we begin our conversation. Can you tell us a little <laughs> bit more about this musical? Yeah, well, I think a lot of people know it. If if people are watching this, they probably know because they're probably Broadway fans. Um, or maybe not. Maybe they're Orange is the New Black fans, um, so they might be into TV. But basically, Spring Awakening is one of those classic... I mean, it's not classic yet, but I think it's become a classic. Um, it's like a cult, uh, like, rock show. And it's a coming-of-age, like, sort of um, teen angst <laughs> musical. Um, but it's not just for young people. Um, in fact, it probably should not be for young people because there's like a lot of, you know, sex and like, you know, there's some really uh, deep, dark themes within it. So um, I think a lot of people just sort of um, were moved by the music, by the story. Um, it's, you know, these kids who are trying to figure out their um their sexuality in a way or, or like how to live um in i guess i think it was 18th century germany 19th century <laughs> germany? I, I, I don't know look it up um <laughs> it was a while ago it was like 15 years um but um yeah and i played taya who was you know Super spunky and adorable, if I do say so myself. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they're all trying to figure it out. And it's their kind of like moment in time. And um, they're shielded a lot from the adults. And I think it's sort of a lesson learned um, about like not having conversations with your kids, um, not being forthright um, can lead to some, you know, some harsh consequences and realities and yeah it's about that the music is great you should go check out the album which i'm not on but it's great <laughs> absolutely we should sh check it anyway kimiko elizabeth glenn and you <laughs> just uh, mentioned implicitly um four words which is which represents a television series um, that uh, played a huge part of your journey uh, a television series called orange is a new black and i have a copy of the book right now with me this is a memoir written by uh, Piper Kerman. Can you tell us a little <laughs> bit more about how it all began, starting with, for example, your appearance uh, in Hugs can be deceiving? Well, um, in general, the show is, I think most people know by this point, but it's about, you know, um, a character who years after she sort of, you know, stupidly um, is essentially a drug mule um, as a young person um, gets sort of outed and then she ends up in prison for however long. But she's the Trojan horse to tell these stories of prisoners um, in a women's prison. And I 
am one of them, if you can believe it. <laughs> I'm sort of the unlikely prisoner. I show up in season two, episode three. Hugs can be deceiving. And um, <laughs> my character is a hippie sort of... Um, you know, they don't really mention exactly how she got in prison, but I imagine it had to do some th- with some sort of protest because that's in her nature. She's very righteous. Um, she's very talkative. People hate her at the beginning because she just like won't shut up. She doesn't know how to shut up and she's <laughs> earnest as hell and um, has a very hard emotional time. Like does have has no hard bone in her body. And then, you know, like throughout the series you see the evolution of her and like what she goes through and like he ends up having a heart for her um because you know she's she's not made for prison um let's just say and um yeah I think anyone should watch it because it's just like one of those shows that I mean it started the whole streaming situation it was like house of cards and orange is the new black were the shows um, that were the only ones that existed on Netflix. Those were the only streaming shows. Other than that, it was like DVDs and like a library of movies and television shows. And then it was those two. And so just for historical value, you should go watch it. But otherwise, it's also very fun. (laughs) Everyone should stream the television series on Netflix and also uh, read the original uh, book Mm -hmm. and personally Kimiko Elizabeth Glenn what is your favorite color because in that television series that there is maybe one that is more prominent (laughs) well I have to say I was very sad when I changed out of my orange jumpsuit because I felt like I looked really good in the orange jumpsuit and a little bit washed out in the beige, but it's okay. It's all right. I'm mostly grateful that I was essentially in pajamas the whole time. But with that said, I think my favorite color is purple. And by think, I know. (laughs) Like lavender, I think, is just a beautiful color. And I used to, for the longest time, paint my apartment in New York, um, purple, like I would paint my room like, like lavender. Um, and it always just like made me feel like I was getting a warm hug at the end of the day somehow. Um, I've since evolved from that, you know, white walls now. Um, just kidding. Kind of a minimalist vibe. Favorite colors are always evolving in every mm. uh, person. Kimiko Glenn and purple is very colorful. It can also be uh, the color of some uh, berries and fruits. And I am wondering, mm. because this is now in spring, what are your upcoming fruits and flowers that are about to bloom? Because I mm. noticed that you have built more than half of your filmography over the last 1,000 days. And I am very curious about the next 1,000 days. Oh my gosh. Well, um, in this moment in time, there's about to be a writer's strike. So I feel like, <laughs> I, I feel like all is unknown at this point. But... Um, Yeah, I continue to work on a ton of animated series, which I have grown to just adore. Um, I love it because A, I have a recording studio. I can just like pop over into my backyard and it's it's in my garage um, and just sort of like plug in and be like, hey, I'm at work now. And um, and the shows that I work on are so fun. I love children's programming. I've, I've realized like how much I really appreciate it and how much I love getting scripts every week and seeing, you know, like what the kids are learning um, and, uh, and getting to sing all the time. It sort of itches that scratch because like I moved out of New York. I'm, I'm in L.A. now. Um, I don't get to sing like on stage in that way anymore. And, and frankly, I, I sort of like, ended that career um so I can like you know for my life I just like want to live in LA with the sunshine and um so it's very convenient that I'm able to sing in some capacity like on a regular basis uh as part of my job 
uh, part of my job. So that is great. And also, you know, like there are a lot of things in existence now um, from those uh, animated shows that are on Spotify. So I feel like really grateful that they're like, I mean, they're all legitimized, but like there's something really special about like being able to just like listen to that stuff in your car. Um, Centaur World is like a great, great two-part album um, with a ton of Broadway uh, people in it, people that I've admired since I was a kid. And um, My Little Pony has some bangers. <laughs> um, oh, I, I, oh my gosh. And Waitress, obviously, speaking of theater shows, like Waitress <laughs> is one of those things that a lot of people love and um, I obviously loved as well. And it's the Broadway show that I did and you should check it out because I love my song. And it also went randomly viral on TikTok. I don't, I think it sort of died down, but the song like truly like people were doing their own videos and they were hilarious, like interpretations of the song. So, yeah. All this to say, what I'm working on now is myself I'm traveling a lot more than I ever have um, because I've spent so much of my life working you know I, I spread myself so thin throughout the years I've been doing this for 15 um, and which is half my life and I sort of had a come to Jesus last year like amidst the pandemic I think we all sort of did some self-reflection and I was like I really just need to like leave when I feel like leaving and like take the reins of my life and live it as fully as I can because you know who knows what tomorrow brings like we can say like oh I'll save for retirement or like when I get this amount of money I'll do this but at the end of the day you never know tomorrow's not promised and so I was like I gotta just like see all the corners of the world and enjoy that so like I have a lot of trips coming up and that's sort of like what it is. And of course I'll come back if, you know, work calls, um, which inevitably it happens when you leave, but yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> Kimiko Elizabeth Glenn, you may be leaving for holidays, but your voice will always <laughs> stay on the screens because I truly <laughs> believe that through voiceover you are entering the childhood of every human born after 2015. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's true. You know what's funny? Like a lot of people, um, like when I'm recognized out and about, they recognize my voice. Like <laughs> they sort of like, they think like somehow they've um, like gone to school with me or something. But like a lot of people are like, oh, I heard your voice and I turned around. Like it's it's interesting. At this point, I've done so much voiceover and I, I can't hear myself because I'm me. But I guess I have a very distinct voice. So people recognize it. I don't know. It's kind of interesting. Absolutely, you uh, might be recognized uh, with um, My Little Pony, with uh, <laughs> Baby Shark, or mm -hmm. very soon. And because of that introduction, um, spelling 22 times your character names <laughs> as <laughs> Keith Chatterley. <laughs> yes. I am looking forward to see uh, the season two and everything that comes out in the next 1000 days. Thank you very much, Kimiko <laughs> Elizabeth Glenn. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. <laughs>